Because when you think about it, Australia is um, a Western country. Uh, our institutions, uh, many of them, of course, were inherited from Great Britain. A very heavy Irish influence, enormous post-World War II European migration. Uh, so we are, in so many ways, an offshoot of Western civilization. Uh, we've had, uh, as this gathering testifies, um, enduring and intimate links with the United States uh, for generation after generation. But of course we live cheek by jowl uh, with, uh, with Asia uh, and we live in the fastest growing uh, region in the world. Uh, China is now by far our largest um, export destination. Um, Japan it still takes 20% of our exports and Korea uh, produces the largest single company as a purchaser uh, of Australian commodities, a company called POSCO. Uh, so when you add all of that together, um, we of course are um, very directly affected by this remarkable uh, economic explosion that's taking part in the Asia-Pacific region. Now, Australia and China uh, have a very important economic relationship. We also have a very important people-to-people um, -people relationship. The largest foreign language, the foreign language most widely spoken in Australia now is, uh, is Chinese. Um, it used to be Greek or Italian, it's now Chinese. Uh, it's just a function of the fact that the immigration from China, from both the mainland, from Hong Kong and Taiwan has been uh, of more recent vintage. But it's a reminder of the important people-to-people -people links Australian universities are more favoured as an overseas university destination by young Chinese than any other uh, country. And uh, it, it's one of the major, several years ago, education was Australia's third strongest export. And so much of that was to our region. Uh, one of the advantages of going to international conferences is every so often you take away a vignette of a statistic. I was at an international conference in Singapore last year and the vignette of a statistic I took away was about the size uh, of uh, India's population between the ages of 15 and 24. The Indian population between 15 and 24 is the largest of that age cohort of any country in the world by far and it neatly exceeds the total population of Indonesia. Uh, which uh, neatly exceeds the total population of Indonesia. Just think about that. <clears throat> think about what that means when you look at the, the youthful population of India compared with the ageing population of China. And, uh, you know, we're, we're quite, we in Australia are quite interested in that because uh, 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 apart from the fact that the Indians play cricket, which is one of their great virtues, <laughs> and I'm sorry to say in recent months they've played it rather better than my country has played it uh, on the test field, of course, uh, we are very, very interested in uh, the growth that's occurring in uh, Indonesia at the present time, and I was delighted to read in the Wall Street Journal yesterday that the level of direct foreign investment in Indonesia has risen quite uh, dramatically uh, over the last several years. But to return across the political divide that Australia and America will be close. And the reason why we're close is that one very simple reality I learnt in in international politics is that the things that bind countries together more than anything else are common values. And the common values uh, uh, of the United States and Australia are, are there to be seen. The uh, commitment to democracy, the belief that the worth of an individual derives not from race or class or, or, or ethnicity or from religious belief, uh, that derives from character and individual worth. Uh, that giving people um, the incentive to work hard and achieve uh, is the most effective way of keeping them out of poverty.